I will put a link to all the code in the description. So let's jump straight into it. So in order to set this up, uh, it just requires two scripts. We're going to make use of inheritance. I'll post that video in the top right. So our base class, this is going to be something that every ability that the player has has. So you could have different types of abilities, for instance, an attack ability or a jump ability or a dash ability or what have you. Every ability is going to have, at the very minimum, these three fields. You would add more if you find that there are more than multiple abilities seem to be having. We're going to call, make them protected. This is a different version of private. This means that this class or any of its children can access this variable. We're going to have an ability timer that will track our time, a cooldown for how, your cooldown of your ability, and a duration for how long the ability lasts. For the ability script itself, this is where you would introduce unique fields for this particular ability. So for my dash, I have a boost percentage and a player move. Then I have the boost as a percent, which I would like the player to be able to enter in a percentage that they want their speed boosted by. So like if they type in 10, it'll increase their speed by 10%, so on and so forth. This uh, player movement player move is a reference to my movement script because I will be modifying my speed value. So in my start, uh, I have get that reference as well as I convert my boost percentage into a percent. So I take my percentage, I add 100 to it. So if the player types in 10, it would be 110 divided by 100. So that converts it to a percent, which will be 1.1 in this case. And then we're going to multiply that in our player move script to increase our speed. Here we have a simple cooldown setup. I believe I did a video on that. I'll link it in the top right. Uh, the short of it, how it works, is you have time.time, .time, which is what time it is since the start of the game. So we're checking if that is greater than our ability timer, and we are pressing our left shift button. If we are, we do our ability effect, and then we set our ability timer equal to whatever the current time is plus our cooldown. So it will be available in another two seconds or three seconds or whatever you have your cooldown set to. Our ability effect will go to our player move script and call a function, feeding in the amount we want to boost by. And then we are going to invoke our reset ability function after our duration of our ability. So if our ability, we want our speed boost to last for 10 seconds, this would be set to 10. And here's my reset ability where we call a different function in our player move script. So let's look at that real quick. So it's these two functions down here. They are public so that I can access them. They take in a float, which is the buff amount, and we set our movement speed equal to our movement speed times our buff when we're boosting our movement speed. And then when we reset it, we just divide it by our buff. It's a very simple way to modify our movement speed. So that's all there is to it. So let's see how we hook it up inside of Unity. It's done compiling. We're going to go down to our player. And here's our player movement script. These are all the same values as we did in our play movement video, which I'll link in the upper right. Down here is our dash script. So I set my cooldown to 2, my duration to 0.25, so this is going to be 1 fourth of a second, my boost percentage to be 500%. So it's going to increase my speed by 500%. And then I just dragged in my player move script to the slot just to make stuff clean. You don't have to do that because our git component line will autofill that for us. So let's hit play. I'm going to make sure maximize on play is unchecked. And we're going to look at our movement speed value. You can tell that you've got a boost in the game. But if you look at that value, you'll see that it jumps up to 3600 every two seconds. I'm just holding down the left shift button. So it's going to keep triggering. And that's all there is to it. Uh, please comment if you have any questions. Uh, hit the like and subscribe buttons. And I'll see you in the next one.